Hey, welcome back guys, and in this video we will be talking about the FA-50 and understand its importance, benefits, and role for the Philippine Air Force and the reasons behind why it's considered a good choice. But before we dive into that, let me share some thoughts and some disclaimers. The information and opinions shared in this video are not influenced by any personality, group of people, company, organizations, or the government, and are simply personal opinions some of which are theoretical in nature but are all backed up by facts. The sources of the information in this video can be found at the end of the video, which includes the licenses of the photos or illustrations used, attributing the owners and thanking them for allowing us to make use of their photos. So going back, yes the Philippine Air Force only has a squadron of FA-50s, 12 units to be exact. It's not much but it's better than nothing. Now, for some reason, not so many of us feel glad or proud to have these assets. Why? Well, apparently many of us want something powerful, something more. Just to make it short, but what is powerful in this aspect? Is it the speed of the aircraft? Its armaments? In our opinion, this is very subjective to the users' needs and the aircraft's ability to fulfill that need. Which leads us to the fact that the Philippine Air Force's choice to acquire the FA-50s must have met their set of requirements, which made the FA-50 the best choice for them. Other options may be available, powerful in terms of speed and its weapons, but will they be the best for the Philippine Air Force? You know, what is the best for the United States Air Force, for example, may not necessarily be the best for the Philippine Air Force and vice versa. There are a lot of factors that must be considered. Take this for example, would you consider buying an aircraft that has the ability to operate in a cold and snowy climate condition for use in the Philippines? Probably not, not unless if the aircraft is intended to be used with that climate, which is very unlikely to happen, right? Now if that still doesn't make any sense, here's another one. Would you consider buying munitions or spare parts from say, the United States with the exact same one also available in South Korea? The best choice is to buy it from South Korea and you will save more on shipping and it will arrive faster since South Korea is closer to the Philippines than the United States. These are just some of the things that many fail to consider. And what many do not know is that fighter jets come in different classes and roles or fall in different categories. Currently, some countries are now in their development stage to develop and manufacture 6th generation aircrafts. Though we won't be discussing the entire subject of fighter jet classification or categories today, we'll leave that topic for another video, but just to give you an idea, the last fighter jet aircraft that the Philippine Air Force operated were the F-5s, and the F-5s were classified as second generation fighters, following the Air Power Development Center's classification. Now just imagine how long it has been since the Philippine Air Force flew fighter jets which unfortunately by today's standards, all of the weapon systems and technology in those aircrafts are considered obsolete, usable but not desirable. So if the Philippine Air Force were to upgrade its air assets and would have considered 4th to 5th generation fighters, they will find it very hard to cope up with the new fighter jets of today. Yes, they may be able to fly them, but it would take a very long time. Because these aircrafts make use of very advanced systems that none of the pilots are familiar with and which require serious training. Other than that, its maintenance may be more complicated and again requires a lot of time and training. Different engine, different electronics, different everything. So immediately acquiring an advanced aircraft from the second generation all the way up to the fourth or fifth generation fighters is possible, but the Air Force may have to wait for a long time to have all of its pilots trained and equipped with the knowledge and skills to operate these aircrafts effectively. And basically what will happen is, for the time they are used for training, they are deemed useless. And since these aircrafts don't come cheap, it will be a very expensive price to pay if something goes wrong during training. That is why trainer fighters exist. They are less expensive, easy to operate and provide the necessary platform for advanced training. 
especially when a government considers future acquisitions of more advanced multi-role fighter jets. The good thing about the F-A-50 is that, aside from its advanced trainer role, it's also classified as a light combat aircraft which is a light multi-role fighter designed for engaging in light combat missions. So the aircraft is not crippled to be used only for training, it will serve the Air Force in light strike missions, reconnaissance, or interdiction roles. Also, the aircraft is equipped with 4th generation avionics, which in our opinion is perfect for the Philippine Air Force's leap from 2nd generation to the 4th generation aircraft. So, the acquisition of the F-A-50 is good enough to prepare its pilots for 4th generation, 4 plus, 4.5, or 4 plus plus generation, non-trainer, actual multi-role combat fighter aircrafts like the General Dynamics F-16 EF Block 60 or the Saab Jazz 39 Gripen. So to make it short, the Philippine Air Force's F-A-50s are powerful enough to serve its purpose which is to train its pilots for more advanced aircrafts and at the same time operate the aircraft in light combat attack missions, two in one effective use. The more interesting question is, what would be the Philippine Air Force's choice for its main multi-role fighters? What do you guys think? Share your opinion and comment down below. And while you're at it, here's the latest promotional video of the Korea Aerospace Industry, the maker of the FA-50 which was released very recently on September 4, 2019. When someone flies to a new destination, that becomes the new path, and it becomes a history. KAI is challenging the world beyond the limits of technology with infinite possibilities. We open a better future and create new history towards the sky. KAI is a system integrator that covers entire field of aircraft development from design, manufacturing, test and evaluation, to logistic. And we are opening a new era in diversified areas of the aerospace industry. KAI develops various aircraft platform, including training solution, fighters, and helicopters, etc. KG-1, the basic trainer with best-in-class performance with outstanding safety and training efficiencies in class. T-50, a supersonic advanced jet trainer considered as the optimized trainer for fifth generation fighter pilot training. FA-50, a light attack aircraft equipped with precision guided bomb and tactical data link. Developed for conducting both training and combat mission. Multi-role aircraft, KT-1 and T-50 proved outstanding performance and superior training efficiencies through the Republic of Korean Air Force's operation and are exported to many allies in Southeast Asia, Europe, the Middle East, Southern America and Africa while building up trust with the customers. KAI is currently developing Korean indigenous fighter jet, KFX, Korean Air Force's core air security asset in the future. With successful development, we are committed to further step up not only national security, but also aerospace industry in Korea. KUH, initially developed as a multi-role utility helicopter for the Republic of Korean Army, is also developed for para-public uses such as amphibious, medevac, national police agency, firefighting, forest agency, coast guard mission, in any geographic region and environment including mountains, urban and ocean area, KUH can be operated safely, with outstanding performance, and we are developing the global market. KAI will further enhance its status from global helicopter market with the light armed helicopter LAH and light civil helicopter LCH, which are under development, along with KUH.
KAI is continuously enhancing the competitiveness in the global market with accumulated technology and know-how. We are participating in the International Joint Development Program for Commercial Aircraft, Aerostructure Design and Manufacturing Project Partnership with various global aircraft makers. By acquiring BASA certification through development of a four-seater commercial aircraft KC-100, in the future, in conjunction with increasing air travel demand in the global market, KAI will expand technical competency and strategic program by joint R&D of state-of-the-art new technology with global aircraft makers and challenge ourselves by developing medium-sized civil aircraft as well. KAI is expanding its business competence through endless challenge. We have expanded MRO technologies, accumulated by various military aircraft performance, upgrade project, and sea checks to the civil aircraft's MRO. And now, we are responsible for safety of domestic airlines, which were previously relied on overseas maintenance. KAI, currently performing the depot maintenance of maritime patrol aircraft, P3C, and performance upgrade of transport aircraft, C-130H. Along with customers' operational environment and requirement, KAI is building global competence by proving the performance update of KT-1, T-50, and KUH. Based on this cornerstone, we are going to make a quantum leap into growth to be an Asia-Pacific MRO hub that encompasses the commercial and the military by expanding the MRO competency and infrastructure. KAI is preparing the fourth industrial revolution by intensive research on future autonomous and space technology. On the basis of next generation core level UAV currently under development, KAI have secured various derivative UAV technologies and with the development of the future unmanned aerial vehicles and personal aerial vehicle, we are preparing to explore the new aerospace market in the future. In the space field, KAI is participating in developing military and civil satellites, including geostationary satellite, compact advanced satellite, military reconnaissance satellite, based on the technologies accumulated by Korea multipurpose satellite. In addition, system integration for Korea's space launch vehicle. We are enhancing our competence with various space programs. KAI is reinforcing its technical capability in line with the government's new policy on transferring space technology to the private sector and is going to open a new era of space development driven by the private sector with promotion of satellite export and satellite launch service. KAI is growing as a global aerospace company with a diversified business portfolio and differentiated technology. KAI's ambitious flying will never stop until our competence opens a new era to be the world's best. Challenges and technologies combine to go beyond the limitations of time and space. Let the imagination and reality meet to become the sky of the future. KAI is creating the sky that you have dreamed of. So that wraps it up for this week's video. And again, if you like this video, please do hit that like button. And if you dislike it, you know what to do. For more discussions, insights, and updates about the Philippine military and the Philippine economy, Please do not forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss any updates. And to our subscribers, thank you so much for helping us reach the 1000 mark. We will continue to provide you with informative videos as we move forward. Again, this is In The Know. Thank you and thanks for watching.